Okay. So last time what we saw was Power Query. So Power Query is the backend of Power BI. Front end is called as Report Builder, where you make and you can make charts. If you want to apply extract, transform, load, or any data transformation activities, you can go to this transform data. And once you go to this transform data, you are in the Power Query editor, right? So what we have seen last time is we saw all the options that are present over here in home and transform tab so just to do a quick re uh, recap we looked at advanced editor we looked at choose column remove columns keep rows remove rows split columns grouping by the the power query uh, data set uh, changing the data type append queries replacing values right uh, in transform we looked at pivoting and unpivoting uh, again we also looked at transpose please remember the transpose the difference between transpose and pivot is that transpose shifts your entire data set whereas pivot specifically changes the columns that you have requested for you can say the detect data type uh, then you can move columns you can convert columns into list uh, you can split columns uh, you can change the format so so far we have seen these many options right uh, so yeah going forward uh, to next there is this run r script or run python script uh, so you can run your r or python scripts over here so all you need to do is first first requirement if you want to do that is you need you need to have anaconda installed if you want to run python and if you you need to have r installed for running your r script and once you click on this you can write a write a python script over here like um, stats is equal to data set. right and it if i click on okay it will transform this data set into based on the calculation so let's say that you are doing some really complex analysis with really complex stuff which is not possible through power bi query editor then you can run this and up make this run this code and make the changes in in your power query data set right now i'm not running this because i'm having some uh, some access issues with with python but go ahead and try if you are using python or r in this case uh, so here you can run r and you are you can run python so last time we covered up uh, up till split column so now we'll look at format so format is changing the data type changing the column into lowercase uppercase you can capitalize each word you can trim uh, you can clean so the difference between trim and clean is trim removes the uh, uh, spaces at the front of the character and the end of the character whereas clean removes the non-printable characters in, in in your column you can add prefix or suffix so let's just take one example so let's say ship mode i add I go to format and I say uppercase then it will add a new column which will have uh, not new column it will add the existing column and it will say add it like did the uppercase ch change the column into uppercase similarly you can apply all this let's say let's try with one with prefix so you add prefix and I say na and space and then it adds na in the beginning so na space second class so that's how you can change your column if you select two columns you can merge them you can merge two columns together into one column then you can also extract so let's say you want to extract the length of this column the length of the characters in this column you can say length and the length of the column gets added right now if you now we are in the transform mode but if you go to this add column and transform column you will see the exact same option of format extract right so what it does is that it keeps this column together at at as itself 
and adds a column through this extract length right so that's the difference between transform and add column so if you want to add an additional column you can apply the same steps from here but if you want to make the change in the existing column then you can use the transform option that is present over here so you can extract length first characters range text before text after delimiters i would say go ahead and try this it's quite straightforward then the next option is parse right so it parses data into xml or json so if you are using uh, some sort of web based application or you want to take this data set and you know use it somewhere else in web based application then you can parse this to xml or json and then that data format can be used for further applications of 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 your analysis so this is how it parses X, data into xml or json the next thing is statistics so i'll just take any numerical column over here so i'll take sales so if i say statistics i can calculate some me minimum maximum median average standard deviation right uh, any of you are not aware of any of these statistical measures or are you clear uh, can any of you in like, let let me know what is a median of a median what is the difference between average and a median right right yeah yeah that's that's good that's good so yeah as niket said average represents the arithmetic mean so take all the values in the numerator divided by denominator uh, number of observation so that gives me the average median is if i sort my data set from smallest to largest number whatever is the middle value right it is the my median right so let's say my 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 number of observations are let's say even numbers in that in that case i'll take two two values of two middle values and take the average of them so that is my median or if i have odd 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 number of observations i'll take the middle value so that is how you can use the uh, me median and the average so yeah thanks nikit the standard deviation so standard deviation represents the dispersion of data so it tells us that how much of this data set is deflecting from its mean right so there is a mathematical formula which is uh, I, I i don't want to get into entire mathematics but in a, in a nutshell it tells you it is the dispersion of the data how far the values or the observations are deflecting from its mean so let's say you have observation 1 2 3 4 5 the standard deviation would be 2 or 2.5 whereas if you have let's say 1 2 3 4 5 and one value is 1000 then the standard deviation will be higher because that there is a lot of dispersion or the deflection from its mean so you take that entire yes 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 so standard deviation i'll i'll take excel and explain yeah yeah yes i'll do so let's say you have one two three four five right and six right so this is this is your observ observations right now if i calculate the standard deviation so there are two options which is standard deviation population and standard deviation sample whenever you are calculating you always take standard deviation population uh, so take the standard deviation population right and say right so right now the standard deviation is 1.07 right uh, sorry 
but let's say in these observation i add one value which is far from the average so right now the average is 3.5 right so let's say if i add a thousand one observation of thousand the standard deviation will increase right so what it tells me that the the values are very much uh, deflecting from its mean it could be one value or it could be many values but it tells me that you know because of one value the the standard deviation is high so i'll give you one example where we use standard deviation so uh, when we were working uh, when we were working on a supply chain project we wanted to understand uh, how much customer is uh, how a customer can be erratic in his uh, ordering pattern right so let's say he orders product a product b product c right and he orders from us every month okay so let's say he orders from us in jan in feb in march we, we used to look at six months of data march april may and june okay now he orders 10 10 quantities 10 quantities 15 quantities 45 quantities again 15 quantity 20 quantity right and then i'll just say ran in between 10 to 25 okay okay so this is how he he observe, uh, ordered from us right so if i want to plan for stock right if i want to let's say do inventory planning i should be able to have a judgment that how much he would order right so we used to calculate volatility index order volatility volatility let's hope i spell it right so volatility index would tell us that how erratic a customer can be in his ordering pattern right so we used to do is take the standard deviation right and we used to divide it by average right so if the order volatility is less than one used to say okay it is he's predictable he is not so volatile in his ordering right so if you see in product b and c have kept values between 10 to 25 only so it is it is a very much within the range but let's say that he orders all of a sudden 400 products in march so my order volatility changes to 1.7 for product a right so it tells me that he can not be very predictable in his behavior right but if he orders 400 or 450 across right 450 420 380 470 and then again 420 my order volatility drops down to a very good number like 0 0.07 so we used to say while planning in supply chain that we used to look at 20 percent product which has the highest revenue and we used to do the order volatility for that that how much is volatile customers are in their order patterns right and anyone who surpasses below 1 or 1.5 is very erratic in terms of his ordering pattern and that is something that we should be careful for so we look at top 10 20 customer with top 20 products and calculate their order volatility and say if he is very volatile we should be able to have more buffer for our inventory so this is how uh, we used to calculate order volatility with use of standard deviation so standard deviation used to tell us that how much they are deflecting from its mean and then take the average yes Nikhil. Uh, no, no, it is one of the ex uh, one of the example, but yes, whenever someone calculates volat volatility, it is the standard de standard deviation is definitely part of it. Some would like to do it by median, some would like to do it by average. 
so there would be fluctuation but in terms of volatility they would be using standard deviation yeah. yes yes so standard deviation is a uh, is coming from variance so i'll just show you uh it's it's you can call it variance or variance it's fine so variance i'll show you variance formula okay so this is the definition uh, this is the variance formula right so it tells us what is my observation divided minus the average okay average of the data set divided by number of observations right and sum of deflection from its mean sum of squared of different deflection of its mean divided by the number of observations gives you population variance or sample variance is the same formula just the number of observation minus one and then whatever variance is we take the square root of it and that square root of variance is the standard deviation so if you see so this is how the variance works and then variance standard deviation yeah so whatever you see is variance formula square root of it is the is your standard deviation so variance square root is the standard deviation yes i hope i explained that right but yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right right uh -huh. right uh yeah right okay uh so shripad i'll just answer it and then maybe you can so the difference uh, or the reason that we use variance and standard deviation is that the variance is into the units of what the observation is right so variance let's say if i'm dealing with thousands then variance would tell me the observation output in thousands but whenever i do the square root it is actually the absolute value of standard deviation so the the variance would tell you the apps the numbers and the standard deviation would tell me give me an uh, abstract value which is just the representation of how much is the deflection from its mean so that is my understanding but sachin if you have other thoughts uh, what do you think yeah yes shripad
yeah yeah that's that's nice yeah correct okay so we've seen a case where we have a order volatility calculation uh, use use it in any of your uh, calculation if you feel like the volatility index like i literally have tried this in multiple domains and people still you know like it so you can try okay going back so we looked at statistics um, and trying to add up uh, uh, trying to transform data into different statistical measures then again we can do add subtract uh, divide modulo modulo is the remainder of the calculation percent and percent of uh, so you can try all these calculations uh, add multiply subtract uh, divide is very straightforward uh, integer divide is also straightforward any questions over here anything that so let's say percentage so if i select this and say percentage and let's say i say apply 50 percent so it gives me 50.5 percent of the values that are present over here Two percent. Yes. Okay. So it applies how much of the total values is? Uh, like it takes percent value. So two percent of one is point zero two. So I take percentage, and I say I want to see two percent of of the existing values. Then it tells me that it is point zero two. Of the existing value and then percentage of is so let's say I want to see percentage of 100 right so let's see mm, let's take a different number because it is already one two so if I take percentage of 300 then it will give me 0 0.03, 0 0.061. I hope that makes sense. So, so yeah. So that is the difference between percent and percent off. Then you can do the absolute value, power, square root, exponent, logarithmic, logarithmic and factorial. You can also do the trigonometry, sine, cosine. Uh, and other other things you can do the rounding up and rounding down so let's see difference between rounding up and rounding down so let's take this discount and look at this 0 0.045 and i say rounding up it transforms it into one so it takes the next integer of of the existing data set and again if i do rounding down let's see what happens to 0 0.045 So yeah, so that's how it takes the integer before the decimal places. So let's say two decimal, like let's say four decimal places. Round it up four decimal places. Down to three decimal places. Okay, so we already had some four or five digits after decimal. So let's say you, if you are looking for three decimal places, right? So it has point one one two five. I take rounding and I say round, and I say I want to do it for three decimal places. Then it will round off to three decimal places. So that's how you can do rounding. The next thing is the date. So let's take any date 
and I say age. So age tells me how much is the difference between that date and today. So I'll take date, age. So it calculates the age. And as we have discussed, it, it changes the existing column, not the, it doesn't add a new column. So, but you will see the exact same option over here. And if you select that option, then it will add the additional column and keep the existing column intact, right? So now it is telling me it's been two, three, four, nine days. So almost like five, six years. So I'll just remove this. So as you can see, along with date, uh, if it's a date and time, in this data format then you can just take date only okay and then if you want to extract year from the existing date then you can say year start of the year or end of the year so let's take year so it will tell me it's 2016 right now i'll just delete this step and i'll add again year start of the year So it, it has taken first day of that year, right? Similarly, if I do year and last day, end of the year, it will give me the last date of that year. It would be good functionality in Power BI that in here, if we can set up the start and the end of the year by our, by our calculation. So let's say if you are doing some financial calculations and we would input that start year and end year and then they would be able to make that change that would be some additional good feature in power bi maybe we should add that in the submit the idea box uh, and then we have month month and then we have month name so it takes the month then start of the month end of the month day in a month and name of the month so let's look at each so if I take month, let's see what comes up. So it gives you the absolute number for November. It is giving us 11, right? It would be good that if you want to apply this, uh, you do it instead of transform, you can use add column functionality. Then you have start of the month. So it will give you first November 2016, right? End of the month, same days in a month so let's see how many days in that month were should be 30 not 31 yes 30 and then in the end you say name of the month So you have name of the month as well. Same, same goes for quarter, same goes for week, right? Week of the month, week of the year, then day. So you can say, let's look at the day. So it gives you the eighth day of the month, day of the week. So second day of the week. So if I look at this filter, it has value ranging from zero to six. So what it tells me that it starts its week, day, its week from zero to six, not from one to seven. So again, go back and then day and then day of the year. So it will give me the number of, let's say, yeah, 313. name of the day so a lot with this date you can add as many options as you can but i'll talk about some other functionality so you won't have to use this and i hope you don't need to use this all but i'll, I'll tell you one good way of doing this uh, earliest whatever is the earliest value 
I can take right and I can transform it into a table right so let's say I can transform it into a table so I don't want that latest earliest and latest and if I select these two dates uh, no it's a different okay so that's how you can do all the transformation along with date okay if there is a time in another column and then there is date in another column you can combine date and time uh, if there is a time functionality then you can just like date you have time functionality as well duration is something that I haven't used yet I'll check a user uh, applications for this duration and I'll, I'll get back to you but time is as similar as that okay we'll come back to time in some time then you have add column so if you see date time duration statistics trigonometry extract merge column all these options those were there as well only thing is that a new column gets added instead of the transformation of existing one uh, then we last time looked at column from example so it takes either from all columns or it takes from selection so let's take from selection and say i'll just take two columns for now or three columns and i say player good is from consumer country is united states and as you can see coming from if i take inputs from three columns and write a sentence it is intelligent enough to write all the others from this three columns that we have selected now this is text based operation what if i do some mathematical operation let's look at that so i don't select these and i select profit and sales right so i say let's see if, if it calculates that yes yes i'm trying to so what happens is that it is giving you the multiplication text it is not giving you the output right but let's say i copy this value go back to excel oops copy not copying 41.9136 right and other one is 261.96 261.96 and if i multiply these two it gives me 109 10979.69 so let's say if it if it is able to identify that or not Zero nine seven. No, it is not. So the observation is that it does not take math mathematical calculations or so. It takes string based calculations or string based logics. It does not take mathematical calculations. I've tried that multiple times. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's. Yes. Let's see. Okay. So you are saying. Yeah. Is equal to. Yeah. Equal to. Profit. So I'll take. 41.9136. Divided by two six one point nine six point nine six. Yeah, it doesn't tell. Yes, Shripa. Yeah, 
yes yes yeah there is a way uh, i was just trying to explain like uh, using this column from examples functionality we are not able to do mathematical calculations yeah okay uh -huh. okay so right right yes true so let's check so if you see it does not take the reference if we try to so it just takes the text and take do the text based applications so there is another way you can do custom columns but i hope you understood the use of column from examples it adds and combines two three four columns together with some text in between uh, and you can play around with that the same functionality we can do using custom column so custom column you can do calculations you can write if statements you can write some lookup values sorry just give me a moment i'm getting a call हॅलो नाही चालू आहे काय झालं नाही ते म्हटलं ए सी बघायला आलो तू आला असता बघायला हा नाही घेऊन घ्या तुमच्या आवडीने मी क्लास अजून अर्धा तास चालेल माझा सॉरी अबाउट दॅट सो as you see we can write a custom column and here using m code m code if you know m code you can write custom formula it can be an if statement nested if statement it can be mathematical calculation now just like what we are trying to do so let's see i'll take sales i take sales column and i insert over here so as you see just i have taken sales the column is in square brackets right and now if i say multiply and if i just leave it like this it tells me that you know token li literal expected it is telling us that this formula is incomplete so i'll take quantity and i'll again insert over here and see no syntax errors have detected right and now if i say okay a custom column cal will be created with that mathematical quality calculation that we have seen so in this custom column as i said you can write multiple levels of multiple folds of calculation uh more complex logics uh nested statements just like i said and think of any other ways which you would like to see right now in this custom column it is if it's a straight forward calculation or if it's an if condition or let's say it is just the calculation is just taking reference from one table not multiple tables i would recommend using custom column okay we can also use dax but that dax is a front end right but if you want to create custom column in back end you should be using this logic right so simple mathematical calculation straight forward calculations you can do this what will happen because of this is first if you are calculating here the performance of the query will improve second this is a row level calculation okay so whatever calculations or whatever logic that you apply is applied for every row right uh, in dax we have a functionality we can use calculated columns or calculated measures but we'll go to that part later but for now just remember if you want to do some straight forward calculations which is just coming from one table and you want to apply it for every row then use this custom column application okay custom column functionality but whatever that you have did you have done over here can also be same achieve can be achieved through dax which is data analysis and expression which is kind of a formulas in your excel but little more powerful than that but all these if if we, if you can achieve through power query formulas nothing like it because it improves the performance and what happens is that when you use dax it takes more computing power to calculate dax measures but if you do it over here in the power query itself it is better for your dashboard performance so you have two options either you can use this or dax 
but if it's possible try this custom column functionality then the next is invoke custom function uh, i'll complete this when we have we, when we'll be covering the parameters part so for now ignore this the next is conditional column so as i said we can do nested if now what they have added is a new functionality that you can do conditional column over here right so i say conditional column okay and i say new column name is nested if okay and if the segment right equals consumer then the output should be segment is consumer i can't write anything right so so this is the nested if right and you can add another clause if the segment was corporate i can add another one which is segment is home office then again okay else no segment so what we have done based on one column we have added nested if column and let's see the output so this is the nested if output and it is telling us based on the seg segment value right so just like that you can also create a nested if or the conditional column based on the numerical values as well so let's say if my profit is greater than 100 then 100 plus and if my profit is less than or equal to 100 i would say up to 100 else no data available so accordingly you can create custom column or nested if column for numerical based value and create buckets for your data set is that clear or any questions over here you feel now i would say go ahead and try using multiple columns so add one column and another column and see how the output changes okay i would say go ahead and try this and see what happens so is it possible is it not possible how would how it would change try and look at it the nested if would be slightly bigger but try using two columns together and see what happens okay um, and then again and or logical operators will come into picture so try that and let me know what you think an operator can also be equal to not equal to is before after so try that and let me know the conditional column for two columns or three columns see how things change and try this move up move down delete delete is straightforward but move up and move down and how does that change so try and see that and let me know if you are able to do it okay so cool uh, the next one is the index column uh, so we've seen these options so far so next is index so index represents the the index of the data set which means the in in simplest terms the the row number right the number or the definitive id of the row right so let's say i want to have index starting from zero then it will create a new column starting from zero to the number of observations or the number of rows that we have i can do the same from one as well a new column will again be added or i can say custom and say uh, my starting index would be five 
and i would do the increment of 2 so 5 7 9 11 and then let's see so it adds index from the values that i have inputted with index of increment of 2 2 2 2 2 okay so that's how you can do it uh, the index option the next is duplicate column you can duplicate the column okay and rest of the options are quite similar what we have discussed so right this is same what we have seen in the transform tab the next is view okay so in the view it tells us do you want to really show anything or not okay so so if i say i don't want to see the formula bar the m code for formula would be hidden okay if i do mono spaced the font is changed to mono space show white space uh, i'll show you just now how the show white space works if i select column quality it tells me how many of the values are valid how many of those are error or empty okay if i look at the column distribution it tells me how the distribution of column looks like it tells me there are 159 distinct values and 52 are unique so difference between distinct and unique distinct tells me that how many unique how many distinct value means uh, let's say you have a column with regions of east west north so there are three different regions so the distinct value would be three but if let's say west appear just once then three distinct values and one unique value so unique value represents there is only one occurrence of that value so 52 values are such which is just occurring just once and distinct means how many distinct observations that are there right so in our region that we spoke there are three three regions so three distinct value but one region appears just once in the data set that is unique okay then you can also look at the column profile so select this and select column profile so you see how the data looks like it tells you count empty values distinct values unique values right uh nan matlab, there is no, no no data over there uh, zero values what is minimum what is maximum average and standard deviation so you can look at that the show white space option is something like so if you see what's happening over here that if i don't do show white space it does not take into account of the space that is there within the cell value but if i do show white space it takes into account the space between two characters or three characters okay so the original value looks something like this right and if i do show white space it will take into account while showing but if it doesn't if i don't select it then it won't show the show, show white space okay so that's how you can use these options yes right 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 the next is tools so tools uh, here you can use the diagnose steps so just like we had performance analyzer in our front end we have query diagnostics in our back end okay the query diagnostic takes into account how much time did it took 
to actually import the data or run the query okay so i say diagnose step so whatever my last step was it will get diagnosed and once i say dino diagnose it creates additional queries in my power query editor so it has added four additional queries in my power query editor and it tells you that how much time did it really took to add add these or apply this transformation so it look looking at it it looks like it started at 1105 14 second and finished at 15 seconds so it took one second uh, and it, it gives you a lot of other information as well uh, you don't need as much actually but it is just for your information that if you really want to go that that deep or if you're up if you're connecting to some data set or, or some schema which is taking a lot of time and you want to evaluate let's say to connect in while connecting to a database that why it is taking so much time then you can actually use this query diagnostic to understand that why or which step is actually taking so much time and maybe you can work on that that front so that's why query diagnostic is useful for you as a pipe uh, as a power bi user or power bi developer you can use that start time and end time for your reference if you are not sure or if you want to live do the live recording so li sorry live observation of query diagnostics so you can start diagnostic right and you say remove this column group by this column right and so you applied certain transformations and now once you have applied transformation you go back to query diagnostics and you say stop diagnostic and then again you can take a look and see how much time did it took for every of those uh, transformations that you have taken again too much detailed information a lot of things you actually don't need this much this much data to understand what's happening but this is it gives you entirety of data set and now if you go to this right click if you do right click the enable load is disabled which means that all these tables or all the queries that i've created over here will not come into front end they are and if you click on this so this is enable load by default but if you want to take this into front end and create a dashboard that how much time it takes really for your dashboard to refresh you can actually select this enable load and apply the transformation so by default it will not be enabled okay so sachin you were not there last time so this enable load and include in report refresh so these are two options so let's say this orders you don't want to take into front end right so you just disable this enable load right it will just not show yeah yeah so if you close yeah it will not show so if you select this close and apply yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah yeah no so the 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 foundational difference of using dax is that dax only is visible in the front end so even if you create a new calculation using dax that dax calculation will not be present in your backend right so backend will just show your original data source that you are using and the columns that are coming with it for for you to evaluate if the dax function is working properly or not you can use the performance analyzer and second thing is there is a tool toolkit which is also you can work with power bi is the dax studio uh, so dax studio you can install and you using that dax studio you can actually have the formatting and the every other uh, options related related to dax like whether it's working properly or not um, if you want to do some validation so dax studio is far much better if you want to apply those but otherwise uh, the DAX that you write won't be visible in your Power Query editor. Yeah, yeah. The next is help. 
and i think we have gone through this all right guided learning documentation training videos support about power bi blog community power bi for developers you can get some samples so it is the same like we did last time these are all the same options that are present in the front end it's the same at the back end as well okay so that's how the power query is okay uh, so power query decisively is a back end of your power bi right think of it like you pull the data from a source you you want to apply some transformation before you plug it to part power bi front end so applying all those transformations everything happens in power query okay if you want to really improve the performance of your dashboard your power query optimization comes into picture right so if someone asks you hey i have built this dashboard and you know it's not uh it's not giving good performance the latency is the latency means that if i click on something it is taking 5 6 seconds 10 seconds right so if it takes 10 seconds it is relatively slow the thumb rule is that every dashboard that you make if you click on something if you click on filter it should take not more than 3 seconds for the values to change right so if someone says or if you feel that your dashboard performance is degraded first thing you should look at is your power query editor remove the columns that you don't need right that will actually improve the performance of your dashboard the second step then comes into picture is which visuals are you using how many measures are you using and the third option that is coming to picture is the relationship or the data modeling which we are going to cover now okay okay so again i'll go back to excel so let's say someone hired you for analysis data analysis for dmart right so they don't have any information okay they don't know they just have one excel spreadsheet okay and they expect you to build a good business intelligence system out of it okay so now think from a superstore's perspective it could be dmart it could be some someone else like how would they store their data right so let's say let's look at one dmart for for example right so dmart location okay let's assume that every city has just one dmart okay for every one dmart they have customer name and details right then payment in payment uh, related information like uh, credit card or or upi or cash right then what could be other information product which products we have sold to customer now let's think from the invoice perspective what else could be quantity right price discount right what else it could be there uh, think what other what other options a dmart could be using apart from all this okay yeah tax then other information could be uh, inventory as well although not part of invoice but yes inventory right what is the sale sales price and discounted one so i'll say sales price okay discount what other things could be there product cost no not cost okay okay let's say we have only this much information right but there are a lot of attributes that come into picture okay so let's say this is one flat file that you all have okay and assuming that you have at least 1000 transactions every day okay so for months of data let's say one month of data you would have how much Thirty thousand rows for one DMART location. Okay, let's say in India they have hundred DMART locations, so, right? So for every month, at least they would have these many number of transactions. And now tell me, 
if you want to really use excel or any flat file system is it going to be really good way of storing information and analyzing information it will not right doesn't make sense to have this kind of information uh, stored in a flat file right so what could we do so one thing we could do is we can start with customer id right customer name product id product name so all information related to product all information related to product uh, or or customer right everything we want so instead of having this flat file what we can do is that let's say we want to understand our customer better let's say what gender he belongs to what age age bracket he belongs to so we want to understand lot of variables associated with every customer so would you be creating additional column for this flat file no you won't so what you do is that you create a lookup table and a fact table okay now we'll explain how that works so in a good world uh, where the it is uh, working in a good business intelligence manner are they are having data warehouses uh, we are just talking one example of data warehousing right so in the ideal world how the data is stored is that they have customer table they have a product table they have location table discount table and they have a fact table which is your uh, actual information so in the customer table what we'll have is customer id customer name gender age what else it could be a uh, working professional like profession right and all the other attributes that we can think are related to customer with product you have product id first name of the product hierarchy of the product so which which is dental care health care um, oral care right so all these related to product next what what else it could be it could be sales price related to product right the next is location so for location let's say pune what is the uh, distance so location id is my first location id right name of the location right distance from our warehouse and few other attributes right like uh, start date of the of our location so this is location table along with that discount table so we have again product id here name of the product and discount percent and then validity of the discount right so i have information related to my customers my my products my location and my discount table and my fact table would have information such as invoice id product id customer id location id and quantity how much quantity that I, that i have sold right how much price total price i have i have collected so only this information i will have in my fact table and everything else is coming from customer table product table location table or discount table so what we are doing is that we are creating a lookup table and a fact table so lookup table will help us to look at what are the attributes present to every 
customer or every location that we have so rather than adding one additional column and creating thousands of redundant rows and putting pressure on my database i'm actually creating a data warehouse right and that data warehouse would have specific table for every information that i need and a fact table which will take row wise information of the transactions that are happening so even if a customer comes in and purchase a product and let's say after some data analysis or market research i find more information on that customer right that what what is his demographics what which credit card is he using right or which uh, which location he belongs to right so any information related to customer i can just add five eight, one one column over here and i can i can add more functionality but the idea is that you have a lookup table and a fact table now this is the most critical part of data modeling that you always arrange a data in a way that it you have something that you have look up to so look lookup has all the attributes related to one specific information such as customer and fact table represents the transactions that are happening or the everyday operations that is happening so the fact table will represent all the row row level information of all the facts um, any questions before i move ahead because this is the critical part of data modeling and this is not related to power bi this is in general so this is how generally the data warehousing works so right now we are looking at a, a schema or a warehouse that has a lot of information on different category of superstores similarly you will have same kind of information for an aviation company right so how would that aviation company would be so my fact table would have information related to everyday flights right so my flight id would here would be here flight number and then origin destination right and number of packs and then revenue right so all these information related to flight would be present over here and then i would have flight lookup table which will tell me ex exact all the details related to flight right so flight id to know which flight i'm flight id i'm talking about aircraft number right um what other things related to flight we have od origin and destination related to flight right distance how much distance we have on that specific route right inception date so this is related to flight information apart from that we have a passenger lookup so same thing related to passenger and i'll have a passenger id over here right and all things related to passenger such as uh like is he existing customer or a new customer uh which source from which is coming is he coming from make my trip or is he coming from clear trip so all information related to passengers right and then all the other thing could be reservation other thing could be online tickets that are happening and price related information so you have data warehouse in every industry that we can think of right it could be manufacturing it could be uh, logistics it could be aviation all these industries have this data warehousing and this is how you talk you arrange information in a way that the redundancy is eliminated the duplication is eliminated and actually you are just focusing on uh, or you are arranging an information in a way that it is normalized okay so this this process is called as normalization of database okay yeah i think i have given a lot of information but but this is how you arrange data sets and tables and similarly if you see over here you have different tables a few of them could be fact tables few of them could be lookup tables and what we will be doing is we'll be arranging them in a manner that we can have a good data dashboard building exercise for us okay so i have one for you to show
okay so what i'll be doing i'll be sharing this uh with you all okay so tomorrow what we will be doing is we'll be connecting these tables to each other okay so you have product lookup you have customer lookup you have calendar lookup just like we have customer and product we have calendar lookup as well uh we have sales we have territories product categories product subcategories and what we will be doing is we'll be connecting these table and building a data model for ourselves okay and we'll try to do at least two or three of these kind of exercises this is one which we just spoke about let's try and find out a schema for aviation as well and some other industry and we'll connect these databases together these data sets together and create a good relationship from this okay so let's try this uh, i'll share this pbx file over the mail and we'll try to connect this uh, and join the build the relationship tomorrow with this data set so yeah that's all if you don't have any questions today